everybody, it's The Van Show, and today we're talking to my friend, Marshall Ryan Maresca. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, how's it going, Marshall? It's going pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you very much for asking. Absolutely. Now, we want to know about you. That's why we're here. Okay. So, Marshall, tell us where you're from. Um, I'm originally from uh, upstate New York. I grew up uh, outside of the city of Syracuse. Um, and then I got really tired of living in a place where winter is piles and piles of snow dropped upon you. So I decided to move down here to Texas where that never happens. So, and I've been much happier with that. I was going to say, you, you never looked back. Yes. <laughs> now, Marshall, how early on did you start writing? Um, I have always been interested in writing, like ever, you know, I took multiple creative writing classes when I was in high school and then further on in college. And in college, I did a fair amount of playwriting. I helped, I actually helped found a, I went to Penn State University and I helped found a theater group there that is still there to this day. Whoa, um, so that's, that's gotta feel nice. It, it is a very nice feeling that you look in the, we, we're, we've, it's now been there long enough. I don't know if it's happened yet, but it's technically been there long enough that there could be second generation members. I, I, I'm not sure if it's happened or not. But um, in and, and being part of the group, we did a lot of original work. So I did some original playwriting there. And then um, when I moved to Austin, I did more theater work here and did some original playwriting here. But then. I, I transitioned that I was, I had always been interested in doing novels, but I had to reach a point where it was like, okay, this is what I'm really going to do and, and focus on that instead of doing theater. So that's, that was my, my journey to that. The period of time I've been writing and the period of time that I've been having books come out are, are of course, very different periods of time. Um, I really got serious about novel writing in 2007. I had been trying and dabbling for a while, but not really succeeding, and uh, I sort of came to an epiphany moment where I thought to myself, this is the thing you keep saying you want to do, but you're just sort of dancing around it, and did a, a concerted study of learning how to write a novel and what that process really is, and, and honing those skills and putting together each of them. Um, and so I was then just writing novel after novel and then starting the process of trying to sell them. So by the so I had many years of working on that before I even had the, the, the first sale that came out. So um, now I, I want to talk to you about your books. Yes. And a lot of your books take place in Meridane. Is that, am I saying that right? You are saying that correctly. Meridane is, is the city in which all of these books are set in. They are, there are four different series that are all set in the same city. And because they are in the same city at the same time, there is a degree of interconnectivity between the different series, but oh. each of them has its own story track. Now, uh, so you, you've, you've made, kind of bridged this like magic and science where you've got like scientists studying magic uh, like a science. I mean, that's interesting. So would you consider these fantasy or sci-fi or kind of a Oh, these are definitely fantasy, yeah. I, I, I'm approaching it from the point of view of a, a civilization that is growing its scientific knowledge and, and a society that is in transition. Um, a lot of times, a lot of fantasies, you'll see societies that are rather you know, locked in a certain place. And I'm specifically writing about a world where things are changing, including their own understanding of the nature of the world around them. So the, the, the time period is, is, is a transitional period, yes. like a, a paradigm shifting. Yes. And now I was on your website, and you've got a whole section about bad movies on there, and a list yes. of those bad movies that people can watch. Yes. Um, well, that they. Well, can, I mean that they they can they, they can, can read my takes on the bad movies. That's right. <laughs> and then they can go to the library or the if they have a video store like we do in Austin, they can right. go rent it there. Yes. Now, do you have this on there because you feel like these are influential in some way? Or do you just want to plague everybody with the bad movies you had to suffer through as a kid? Well, when, when I was a kid, um, I, I think I, I delve into this in the, in the first one of that. But I, uh, you know, we had like the full cable package. So, and whenever you, you know, have like HBO or Showtime or Cinemax, any movie that they have that month, you know, they only have access to say thirty movies for the whole month of what's on there, you know, what they have licensed. And so lots of movies get shown over and over and over again. And if you were a kid who just, you know, sat around inside all summer, you watch those movies over and over and over <laughs> again. And there's something about the nostalgia, but also, you know, even if a movie if a movie's outright bad, like just there's not, not well made, there might be like 
a, th- a story thread in there that you're like, that's a great idea. They just executed it terribly. Right. But, like, there's still something good there. Right. You know, and you can hold on to that. And maybe in your head you made the story way better. Because I know I've gone back and watched movies that I remember being so great. And then I watched them and I was like, ooh, whoops. No, I think I, I think I've but made up more made of that story head in my head. So yeah. much better, yeah. And and then maybe you can use that and craft your own story. I mean, a lot of a lot of great books and a lot of great stories came from somebody going, "This thing was really good, except this part. And if I did a thing without that part, then I'll, you know, then that'll be a great story." The light bulb moment. Yeah. Ding. One, two, three. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.